We welcome you to the Cathedral Church of All Saints as we gather to mark this second Sunday of the Easter season. A reminder that you can find the text, today's bulletin, on the Cathedral Church of All Saints website under the information tab under newsletters and bulletins. And this morning our service is that of a morning prayer and I welcome Brother Dylan with me this morning. We begin our service with an Easter hymn and joining us for music today we will be listening in on the Lutheran Church in Kentucky as they sing that Easter day with joy was bright. <laughs> time I would welcome the children to pay attention and tune in. I will also add that over the next several weeks until we can return again for normal worship, we will be posting the Sunday School lessons on our website. Again, you will find those under the information tab. I think this week it's identified as children's activity for Easter too. And if you know of anyone that would like them in a hard copy already printed, just let me know and we can mail those out. So this morning our gospel story in particular is one that continues our Easter story and it's really a question of how do we see and how do we believe? And we're going to be talking about Thomas and his inability to kind of see in the moment and to understand what was going on. So by way of demonstration, I want to just talk a little bit about um, sometimes what we see and what we believe are not necessarily one and the same. And sometimes we don't believe until we see something happen, which is part of Thomas's story. So by way of demonstration, I have this morning a big jug of water. And that may be a little hard to see, so I'm going to put a few drops of food coloring in there just so that... Uh, Maybe it most will magically appear on your screen. And then I'm going to put a glass right in front of this jug. And what I want to do is get the water from the jug into the glass. And I can do that. Do you believe me? You would say, sure, that's easy. You take it by the handle, you pour it in. But what if I told you I could do it without touching the jug or touching the glass? Would you still believe me? Probably not, unless you could see it happen. So, let's see if I can move that water from that jug into that glass. I'm, I'm trying to move it just with my mind, but nothing seems to be happening. Don't have a magic wand with me this morning. Let me try something else. Okay, so the idea, this water into that glass, I don't touch the jug. I'm not touching the jug. And lo and behold, now you see and you believe. 
and have a little mess for Maureen to clean up here afterwards. Sorry, Maureen. You see, you believe. That's part of today's message, how the gospel teaches us the stories of Jesus. And at some point, we have to take those messages to heart, live them, and learn. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together in praise, to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O, o come, come, let us, let us worship. worship. The Venite. Come, let us sing, sing unto the Lord. Lord. Let, let us, us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come, come before, before his presence with thanksgiving, thanksgiving and raise aloud, shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. O oh God, our beginning and our end, accept our doubts, heal our desire for certainty, and by your Spirit's gentle touch, make us a people forgiven and forgiving through Jesus Christ, the giver of peace. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed him. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let the, your Holy One experience corruption, for you have made known to me the ways of life. 
You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and all and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 16. The responses are printed in the bulletin. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. For my body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bless your holy name for the heritage you have given us. Show us the path of life that we may follow it in hope and come to know the joy of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Holy Gospel today, written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter beginning at the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands in his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the risen Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Jesus came and stood before Thomas and said, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. 
This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our believer. There is a poem by the author and poet Carl Sandburg entitled Fog. And it reads, the fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. Now it seems to me fear is like that too. Fear sneaks in quietly, subtly, sits watching and waiting. And sometimes it moves on in the same way it came, but sometimes it remains. Fear. As an emotion, it can at best make us doubt the reality we see before us, and at its worst, it can cripple us. To quote singer-songwriter Bruce Springsteen, fear's a powerful thing. It can turn your heart black, you can trust. It'll take your God-filled soul and fill it with devils and dust. And it can be so imperceptible at first that it creeps in like the fog until we find ourselves lost in it. Now I say all this because our gospel today begins by painting a word picture of us that seems at odds with with what we gathered here to celebrate just last week. Jesus, the beloved teacher, Healer, prophet, and Messiah had died, only to rise again. We pick up the story in John's Gospel where we left off last week, after the discovery of the empty tomb. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, that day, our text reads, that same day, Hours after Mary had gone before first light, while it was still dark, noted John, after the Sabbath had passed, to visit the grave of her beloved Rabboni. And upon arrival, she finds the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. Talk about fear creeping in. What has happened? Where is he gone? Who has done this? She turns and races back to find the sequestered band of disciples and Peter and another race to the tomb to see for themselves. And it is just as Mary has said. And one of them, not Peter, but the other, sees the empty grave and believes. When they depart, Mary lingers behind and has the first encounter with the risen Lord. Mary, weeping at the empty doorway at first, doesn't even recognize him. Was it so unexpected and beyond possibility that the reality in front of her simply didn't register? Was it fear and grief that clouded her vision of him? But once the penny drops and she knows who it is that stands before her, he sends her back to tell the other disciples that she has seen the risen Lord. And she tells them the things he had said to her. So here it is, nightfall of that same day, and the disciples are all together now behind doors, shut and latched, in hiding, out of fear, John says, of the Jews. Not fearing the Roman authorities, notice, but fearing their own people. That's the power of fear. When your foundations are so shaken that you no longer trust your own. And maybe they even fear Jesus. If indeed he is alive, what must he think of them? And so it is that the first words Jesus speaks to them when he suddenly appears in that locked room is a message of comfort and relief. Peace be with you. The Hebrew word here for peace is shalom. And shalom is much more than our simple translation of peace. It is multi-layered. And while, yes, it means peace, it is far wider and more encompassing and disarming. 
for it speaks of harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. And shalom can also be used as a blessing in saying both hello and goodbye. Jesus, in these opening words, both recognizes the fear and unbelief they are experiencing, but also acknowledges their brokenness, how their very faith foundations have been shaken. He speaks this word to reassure them, to restore them to the relationship that once was. Peace be with you. Only then can they comprehend what has happened and the reality of who stands with them in that locked room. When the fear lifts like the fog in the presence of the rising sun, then the disciples rejoiced, says our gospel writer John. Now a couple of editorial comments here. One is that we can see in this story what may at times trouble us. Because when our faith grows thin, we too may find it hard to trust in a God who sometimes seems to have disappeared on us, whose presence we don't recognize. Then the fear, the seeds of fear can take root. How have these past several weeks been for you? As the number of infections continue to grow both around the world and in our own province and city, things we once gave no thought to fill us with suspicion and dread. Something as simple as going to the grocery store has become risk-taking behavior. We may not be behind locked doors, but fear is keeping us inside. And naming that fear and acknowledging that reality is not a bad thing. Remember that the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written many years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Mark's gospel, the earliest of them, was written anywhere from 30 to 40 years after that first Easter. Yet, looking back 30 or 40 years after the fact, none of those writers glossed over or edited out the fact that the resurrection was not initially something that filled them with joy and celebration, but rather filled them with doubt, fear, and, and suspicion. It would have been an easy thing to say, oh yes, we knew all along he would come back to us. Our faith was so strong, we were so wise in our understanding, we couldn't wait for the Sabbath to be over so we could celebrate his rising from the grave. There was never any doubt in our minds. But that's not what's written, is it? And that, for me, is the integrity of the witness of Scripture, and one of the reasons I would contend that it is still relevant to us today. If we have questions and doubts, we're in very good company. And another note is that faith is not a linear progression. We don't get faith and keep it and grow it. Faith can be like the waves on the sea, times of great heights and times of bottomless depths. What happens after Jesus offers them shalom or peace, reassurance that he is not here to chastise them, he breathes on them, imparts into them his very spirit and gives them authority to go out into the world in his name, with his authority, and their primary mission, to preach forgiveness. Jesus doesn't say, now go and protest those who put me to death. He doesn't say, revenge is the watchword. He doesn't say it was Judas's fault for betraying me, or Peter's fault for denying me, or the fault of the rest of you for running away. He says, continue the work we began. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so they danced off down the street, singing Alleluia, knocking on doors and shouting from the rooftops the good news of the risen Lord. And they all lived happily ever after. Well, no. Thomas is missing. 
Thomas wasn't there to experience this. We don't know why. We never learn where he's been or what he's been up to. But later that day, he returns to be greeted by the news. Hey, Thomas, guess who dropped by while you were out? And his immediate reaction is to dismiss their claims that Jesus is alive as pure fantasy. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, put my finger in the mark of the nails in his side, I will not believe. From this, we've come to coin the phrase doubting Thomas for anyone that expresses disbelief in anything. But this wasn't just an attempt to call out Thomas or discredit his reputation. It is a reality that is so unexpected that he simply can't process and accept it. I remember many years ago having quite an animated discussion with a man who was convinced that the Apollo moon landings were all a hoax, staged and filmed to make the world think they had been to the moon. And there was no way to convince him otherwise. When the risen Lord again returned the following week, and note that they are still in hiding, Thomas was there. And Christ did not criticize or belittle him for his doubts. Rather, he affirmed Thomas in his doubting and helped him move beyond the doubt into faith. He understood Thomas's initial skepticism. How do we believe in something we've never seen or never experienced? This is true for us too. Having doubts about our faith is nothing in and of itself to be ashamed of or to be escaped or hidden from. For us, in our uncertainties, Thomas can be our patron saint. Thomas is the one who can give us the courage to face our doubts and our fears. The reason I think that we read this same story year after year, always on the Sunday following the miracle of Easter, is to remind us that faith and doubt are not polar opposites, but one informs the other. It is not saying that we should hold out on believing until we have concrete proof, but it does say that ours is not a blind faith either. The Christian faith does not say that reality takes a back seat when we walk into the church. In fact, this passage reminds us of the hard ground we sometimes walk between faith and reality. There is a wonderful quote of the late astrophysicist Carl Sagan who said, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The last thing I would point out in this gospel account is that when Jesus returns to them, recognition is not immediate. That is one of the curious aspects of the whole resurrection narrative, which again the gospel writers do not deny, cover up, or edit out. Mary thought he was the gardener. Jesus must show his wounds to convince these disciples today and Thomas of who he truly is. On the road to Emmaus story, he appears as an unknown traveler. When he comes to the beach on a morning weeks later, as the disciples are once again gone fishing, he is unrecognizable at first. How may Christ be hidden from us today because we simply aren't looking with the eyes of faith? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, Jesus says to Thomas. The governor of New York this week, Andrew Como, said to New Yorkers, I appreciate your prayers, but what good are they unless they translate into actions? And I would say, look again. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The Anglican Episcopal Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine in Manhattan is being turned into overflow patient space for nearby Mount Sinai Hospital. How do we explain those who day after day put themselves in harm's way? Doctors, nurses, cleaners, truck drivers, food delivery persons, even those that heed the advice to stay the blazes home are reducing the risk for others. Says Fred Beekner, 
I think that Christ dwells deep down in all of us, believers and unbelievers both. And that again and again, whether we realize it or not, he brings us healing and hope. I think there have been moments for all of us when the hand we reached out to another's need was not our hand, but Christ's hand. And moments when the tears that have come to our eyes at another's sadness or joy, or even at our own sadness or our own joy, were Christ's tears. It is not the eyes of the head that we see truths like this, but with the eyes of the heart. Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Our passage this morning ends with this note by our gospel writer, John. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing, you may have life in his name. There is more written in the book, and the whole world could not contain it all. And the book is still being written. And I think your name is in it. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer request in the Anglican cycle of prayer today is to pray for the Church of Ireland. In our own diocese, we are asked to pray for the Reverend Lorraine Otto of Tangier and the retired clergy of Eastern Shore Region, the Reverend Pamela Bishop and Bill, the Reverend Kathleen Knott, the Reverend Catherine Tate, Tate the Reverend Tricia Ingram and Dave, and the widows of the Eastern Shore Region, Mrs. Bernice Logan and Mrs. Sandra Wagner. Let us pray that the results of Christ's resurrection may be seen throughout the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, the response being, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Even though it may not feel like Easter, your Son, our Passover Lamb, has taken away the sin of the world. Forgive us and all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son said, peace be with you. Bring your peace to the world and to our own country. Let us share our peace within our world today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son appeared to Mary Magdalene when she was weeping. Comfort those who are sad, anxious, lonely, depressed or grieving due to this isolation and uncertainty. And with that, we pray for Linda, our primate, and Ron, our bishop and metropolitan, for our whole diocese as we seek a new bishop, for Paul, our rector and dean, Helen, our associate priest, our deacons, Ray, Heather, and Maggie, our associated parish of St. James here in Cove, 
Paul, Nick, Russ, Pauline, and Peter, and all who make music in this cathedral, even though it is empty, and all who minister here in so many ways, both lay and ordain. We pray also for those who have asked for our prayers, remembering Pat and family, Dennis, Martha, Tim, Shelley, Leland, Joan, Marion, Keegan, Susan, Suzanne, Nadine, Pam, Don Marie, Laura, Freya, Mary, Barry, Nicole, Alex, Kathy, Joanne, Paula, Beryl, Jack, David, Bruce, Chris, Gordon, Brian, Geraldine, Evander and family, Charles and Kevin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your son met the women and asked them to tell the disciples about his resurrection. Guide Christians everywhere to witness the resurrection within their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son proclaimed himself to the disciples, to the two disciples from the scriptures, and made himself known in the them with the breaking of bread. Reveal him to us and all people through the teaching of your word. Let others know him through our own kindness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son strengthened the faith of Thomas by telling him to touch his hands and sides. Reassure those who are troubled by doubts and strengthen their faith in your goodness. Bless all those who doubt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son conquered death by his death and won the victory by his resurrection. Be with those who are dying and lead them to life with you forever. We remember today Raymond Taval on the anniversary of his death and also Leah Barton, Kelly Lee Ingram. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that all those who now celebrate these joyful holy days here on earth may finally praise you forever with all angels and saints in heaven. We ask this through your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray to our Savior, pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Risen and reconciling God, your greetings after the grave acknowledge the trauma and turmoil of that time and our own. The message of peace was what your disciples needed to hear and what the world needs now. When we are reunited with those from whom we've been separated, may our greetings too be of peace. And may we see all division in the light of your reconciliation and all crisis in the context of your resurrection. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship. And again, throughout the week, we will have a midweek service uh, that will be posted about noontime. And we will continue this uh, pattern of Sunday worship until we are able to open our doors again. So as we go forth from this place, we ask God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. And a concluding song, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.